Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to use energy conservation to solve problems with loops in them. Here is the most common example. What is the minimum height h that a roller coaster car must start from in order to complete a loop of radius r? And we're going to ignore friction. So I'm just going to draw a loop. It starts at some height h, and I know that the radius of this loop is r. And that immediately should tell me that the height of the loop is 2r, and we'll call this ground 0. And energy analysis, E naught equals E, is going to tell me that in the beginning I have all potential energy, or Yu-Gi-Oh. Then at the top of the loop, here, I am going to have only potential energy because of my height of 2r and also some kinetic energy at the top right there because the object has to be moving at that point with a velocity and you may remember this from your centripetal force notes that velocity is going to be the critical speed and so it is critical to the problem okay well let's go ahead and fill this out mg h here I would have mg to r because that's the height that you're at at the top of the roller coaster loop and the kinetic energy would be one half mv squared well to solve for h it's going to make things a lot easier for me to solve for h if I get rid of the mass. Sorry, hold on. Get rid of the mass. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the mass. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is divide everything by g so that what I get once I clean things up is h equals. 2r, sorry, 2 times the radius, plus, I'll call this v squared over 2g. Now, normally, what you would be asked to do is to find this height in terms of r. So let's do that. Um, in order to turn this term into something that has an r in it, I am going to need to remember how to find the critical speed. So at the top of the loop, the critical speed is such that only the weight force is giving you a centripetal force. So you would say mg equals mv squared over r because that is the weight force. The m's cancel out. And you now know that v squared is going to equal g times r. Now usually we take the square root and we call that root ger, but I'm actually just going to replace this with g over r. By doing that, I would get a cancellation, and I would get 2r plus r over 2, which of course is basically like just saying 2 and a half, 2.5 times r. So that's how you find the minimum height to reach the critical speed, or I'm sorry, the minimum height to complete the loop at that critical speed. Sometimes you'll be asked to solve a problem where you don't need to use the critical speed um, or that centripetal force equation to find the critical speed. And instead, you'll express things in terms of, um, well, in this case, it's going to ask us what the velocity is going to be with g and pretty much that. So let's take a look. A block of mass m slides from rest down a frictionless track. We want to derive an expression for the velocity of the block at point p. Then use 10 meters as the initial height. Uh, and use that to find what that velocity actually is. So let's start by identifying the energies that are going to be present here. So at first, you're going to have all potential energy, Yu-Gi-Oh. At the end, you will have potential energy and kinetic energy because the object is going to be moving with a velocity up. So Yu-G plus Okay. In the beginning, I would have mg times h as my potential energy, but here I would now have mg times h over 2. 
at point P because we're saying that the radius of the loop is half of that height. Then I would add 1 half M V squared, get rid of M, and the purpose of this is to solve for the velocity. So I'm going to get the velocity by itself by first subtracting mgh over 2 to the left side. So I'm going to get gh minus mgh. And I'm going to do this whole thing over 2 so it's a bit easier to see. Oh, sorry. That m would cancel out. Uh, and then this would equal 1 half v squared. I can combine this gh minus 1 half gh because it's just going to be, well, 1 half gh or gh over 2. And then when I multiply both sides by 2, I'm going to get rid of that 2 on the bottom. And I would find that the velocity is the square root of g, not the square root of ger. So then if I wanted to figure out, sorry, v, if I wanted to figure out what that velocity was, I would do the velocity is the square root of 10 meters per second squared times, oh, 10 meters. Wow, it's almost like I wanted this to be super easy. And your velocity is 10 meters per second. Congratulations. You did it.